Oh, my heart is a very, very good evening to you. It is me, Scotty McClure. And we are, of course, live on Facebook Live just for you, saying dinky-doo. Nothing is past me, you know. Welcome, 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 I say, to our live stream. Now, your job, of course, is to make sure that everybody knows about this live stream as it happens. So tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue live just for you, saying dinky-doo. The wonderful David Hennessy has just joined us. Alan McGee, dinky-doo, welcome, welcome, welcome to Scotty McClure's live pop-up just for you, live on Facebook. We are streaming. We're live streaming right now. Fantastic. Hello, Scotty McClure, dinky-doo, good guy, says the wonderful Brian Hall. Hello, Brian. How are you tonight? And welcome, 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 I say. Lovely to have you with us. And uh, lots and lots of sharing tonight. We'll be telling 10 to tell, 10 to tell, 10 to tell, 10. And, of course, we've been doing pop-ups at 10 o'clock in the morning in the last two or three days. So there we are. Hello, Scotty. Hello, Scotty. You're looking good, says Marianne Bryce. I thank you, Marianne. That's very kind of you. Take the bonnet off, says Alan McGee. Alan McGee. How can you say such a thing? Take the bonnet off. Kareem Zachariah is watching. Dinky doo, Kareem. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Dinky doo, says Catherine Allison. Lovely to have you with us. I hope we'll have a great stream tonight. Um, and I hope you all got the message that it's 8 o'clock and not 9 o'clock. What I've been doing, I've been live streaming on YouTube at 8 o'clock and live on Facebook Live here at 9 o'clock. But I thought to myself, perhaps it's a little late for some people. You know, you can't please all the people. Good evening, Scotty McClure. Um, hope you're well, mate. It's great to see you. Loved your old radio shows. All the women drivers, says Stephen McMahon. Dinky do, Stephen. Good evening, Scotty, says Tony Mac. Hello, Tony. Hello, Scotty McClure. How are you tonight, says Kareem. Dinky do, Kareem. Dinky do, says Catherine. Lovely to have you all with us. That's excellent, Catherine Allison there. And uh, Craig Walker says, Dinky Doo, Jack Melly's Dinky Doo, Alan McGee, have you had a short back and side? Fresh trim, Alan, you know, very nice. Mark of respect for who I'm going to see. And who am I going to see? You lot, live here, streaming on Facebook. So excellent, that's the way it should be. More like a short sides and back, um, a short front as well. Uh, short front and sides, please. Evening from Motherwell, Scotty, says Tom Farley. Fantastic. I didn't realise we went as far as Motherwell. Tremendous. Only teasing. We get people from Canada and America, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, Jack says, I'm J-Dog, so you know. No problem, Jack. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Nathan Logie, hello, Scotty. Hope you're well. Good evening, pal, says Thomas Hamilton. Hello, Tom. Dinky-doo. Just think... The government telling the truth. This is my own opinion, and this is what I believe. Was COVID-19... Hold on a second here. We might have a conspirator. Was COVID-19 actually made in a Chinese lab? And are all the government... See more. I have to watch. See more. I once lost a broadcast. Um, if you want... So, nothing... Stick laughing faces if you won't just be as bad. So, so what is that? Something about chemical bomb from China. The government trying to get away with people in China. Been eating animals for years and years. Nothing like this. Stick laughing faces if you're just as bad. Don't understand the last bit. Anyway, Eddie D, Dinky Do. Danny Joe's watching. Hi, Danny. Welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you with us. Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster. First Lord of the Internet, the world's most humble man, live streaming on Facebook Live just for you and saying dinky do. John Jones is watching. Hello, John. I thoroughly enjoyed your contributions and your banter. There we are. Ian Kells watching. Dinky do, Ian. Lovely to have you with us. Big share, guys. Let everybody know that we are on big style. All right. Uh, I've got that in front of me here. Uh, Peter Connolly, dinky doo. Good evening, Scotty, dinky doo, says the lovely Susan Forrest down in Lancashire. Hello, she's a lassie from Lancashire. Karmic McCusker is watching, dinky doo, Karmic. 
Catherine says, stay safe, Scotty. Absolutely. Well, we're all in our houses. That's part of the thinking behind the 10 o'clock in the morning pop-ups. Uh, we did one the other day, and I think 5,000 of you came and joined me. Good evening, Scotty. Nights there stretching now. Still a tad chilly outside, but cosy watching indoors, says Michael. Absolutely, Michael. Be able to put the heating off now. Nicky Graham's watching. Good evening from Kirkid Dillach. Big dinky do, Scotty, says Gordon Quaite. Hello, Gordon. Good to have you with us. Just going to do the first of the shears, guys. And if you could do the same, that would just be outstanding. And uh, we'll let everybody know what is what. Let everybody know what is happening, I say. Um, Gordon says, good evening, and a big dinky-doo, Jem Page. Dinky-doo, Jem, lovely to have you with us. Wally Logan has joined us. Hello, Wally, the shout-out show. Um, good evening, Brian's replying. And what they do to cats and dogs and other animals is disgusting. They need to shut it down worldwide says Brian Hall, shut down uh, eating the cats and dogs. Z Kai Tang is watching. Hello, Z Kai Tang, Dinky Du Han Hao. Hi, Scotty, says Z Kai Tang. Now, I'm just going to share uh, to the story. That'll get us started. Let everybody know what's what. Can everybody do the same? All your groups, all your friends, Everything, share, share, share. It's all in the sharing. Wonderful Diane Wheatley is watching. Thank you, dear Diane. How are you keeping during the quarantine time? Well, we're just getting on with it, Jack. I mean, I write, I read, I play music, I sing, I um, work my way through old papers and get shot of as much junk as I can. Good evening from Salford. Says Jem, we love Salford. I used to stay in uh, Ellesmere Park. Do you know Ellesmere Park? So there you are. Nikki says, hi, dinky do, Scotty, dinky do. Hope you're keeping well and keeping safe, Nikki. Absolutely doing our best. You can't do better than your best. Good evening, Scotty, dinky do. I'm back to work tomorrow, so I'll Bluetooth your morning show. Yes, hopefully we'll pop up at. 10. We're just checking for numbers. The more numbers we get, the more it's worth doing. I mean, as I say, um, you know, sort of almost 6,000 of you joined me the other day. Um, Adam Spilby Higgs and Dinky Doo, Stuart Walker, Dinky Do. Lovely to have you with us. Good old Blackpool. Yes, Brian, you can't beat good old Blackpool. The M55, am I correct? There we are. Richie McCusker, dinky do. Nikki says, I'm a Paisley lass. Good. There are a lot to be proud of in being a Paisley lass, I can tell you. And do you know the background, Nikki, to a spinster? That's a great Paisley word. A spinster, an unmarried lady. Where did that come from? Hello, Scotty from Inverkip. Oh, great Cochrane. We love Inverkip. When I was a wee boy, used to travel through Inverkip if you were going to Largs. They are all the traffic went through the main street. Then they bypassed it. Paul Crickshanks, Dinky Doo, Gordon Great, Gordon Ruddick. Wonderful man is watching. Hi, Gordon. Dinky Doo with some great people on the other day. Somebody was asking me, did I remember Clem Ashby in the morning program? I said, yes, and Gordon Ruddick would know Clem as well. And uh, the day Clem died, I believe Ricky Fulton called round to pick him up with Kate, and he'd gone. Uh, Fred Walton, says Jen Page, yes. Kev McCauley, dinky do. Top man, Kev, by the way. Wonderful uh, manager and uh, great marketeer and salesperson. Um, Michael Clark's watching Dinky Do. Welcome, welcome. If you've just joined us, folks, it's Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet, and we're broadcasting live streaming on Facebook Live. Excellent. We'll be here for a good few minutes, chit-chatting to everybody. Daniel Tibbing's watching. Hello, Daniel. Brian, reading Lord of the Flies. Aha. Piggy. Yes, poor little piggy. And uh, the conch, all that sort. Ralph, yes, Lord of the Flies, wonderful. Um, William Golding, Anthony Percival, dinky do, dinky do, Anthony. What he was talking about there, Golding, was 
talking about a dystopian society, much like we're living in right now. But I hope we don't go down the Lord of the Flies route. Good evening, young man. I hope you're well, says Michael Clark. Did you do, Michael? Excellent stuff. Has everyone read Lord of the Flies? What's your favourite book? Do let us know. Good evening, Scotty from Falkirk. Did you do? Give a shout out to my pals Pauline and Andy. I'm missing seeing them, says Paul. You will, Paul, yes. Let me do more sharing here because we need to do a lot more of it. Get these figures up, guys. We need to be sharing. Did you realize I just posted about Bob Waiton? Um, he's been forced to cancel his 112th birthday uh, because of the coronavirus. He's looking well. So I hope he comes and joins us tonight for Scotty McClure. There we are. Excellent stuff. Right. I'm just going to share, if you can all do the same. Sharing, 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 sharing. Um, you just go along to a Sunday school. Uh, Christian Sunday School, and we had a little song, the end of it, uh, you put your penny in a bowl, and you sang, hear the pennies dropping, listen while they fall, everyone for Jesus, he shall have them all, dropping, 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 listen while they fall, everyone for Jesus, he shall have them all, wonderful, anybody else sing that, anybody else go along to a Christian Sunday School, Peter Connolly, Dinky Doo, Scotty, I've got a smart speaker, for Christmas, but I've never set it up. Uh, I've used it, so I'm now isolated after 20 years of car trade hours. My wife and daughter used it, so I said, Alexa, what time is it? Answer, I only take instructions from people who live here. Ooh, so there you are. Well, you need to program Alexa, and uh, you need to uh, save me in the routines. So there you are. Get that into Alexa absolutely right now. Set up your Alexa and um, set Scotty McClue up as a skill. Scotty McClue. Alexa, play Scotty McClue. And uh, get Alexa to find us. So that's fantastic. And store it in your routines. Hello, Scotty. From says Janice Muldoon. Did you do Janice? Scotty McClure, can I Skype you shortly? Uh, Kareem, I think you can Skype me anytime it suits. Feel free to do so. I'll just have a quick comfort break. Excuse me, just a second. It is roasting hot in here. That's better. There we are. So, uh, yes, Kareem, I think you can Skype now. Uh, feel free to try it, and we'll see if we can get you on. Excellent stuff. Yes, there we are. Good. So, yes, you should be able to Skype me right now. Wonderful. Um, Kareem's going to Skype and we'll have a chit-chat. Hello from Greenock, says Jack. I know Greenock well, Jack. Yes, I've brought up Greenock. Hello, Scotty, says Christopher. Dinky you do, Christopher? I see the one-year-old boy from Illinois lost his life um, from Corona. I think we can assume it can attack any age. Uh, I've just seen Strathclyde Park shocking amount of, and I can't read the rest, John. I imagine you're saying the shocking amount of people have turned out to Strathclyde Park. Where am I sharing with here? Come on, guys. Share to a page. Share to the big Scotty McLean. We'll put live now. Tell everybody, tell everybody. Can everybody keep sharing? Let people know. Um, as I say, there's no point in me popping up if everybody doesn't know about it, because I just know from 36 years of experience and uh, 28 years of Scotty McClure shows that people come along, oh, Scotty, oh, and I'd have watched that. Why didn't you tell me? You say, we told you we've been promoting it all day, blah, blah, blah. So there you are, all that stuff live now. Join us. There we are, live now. Join us. It's just a little bit slow. And I say, I'm hoping somebody's going to give me a fast computer when all this mess is over. I believe we'll get over the COVID 19 virus and tough times like these. It shows who is the something and real people. We need to show our love and strength to the people who have looked after us. Absolutely, Tony. Good for you. There we are. Right, I'm just going to share this, guys. 
So that's gone off, and you should be able to see that in your um, Facebook page. Follow me. I've got a massive queue at the moment of people wanting to befriend me on Facebook, but if you can follow me as well, then that's us connected there. Alistair Bajak's watching, Alistair King's watching. You need to be called Alistair to watch. Uh, good to see you, Scotty, says the lovely Janice Muldoon. I thank you, Janice. John Hanlon. Hello, Scotty. Jeff Bernstein. Dinky do, Scotty. Dinky do, Jeff La. Good banter with everything. Um, just out for the daily exercise of the dog, Scotty. Um, I'll be home shortly. Excellent. Good for you. Jack says, I love your rap. Oh, yes. I did uh, a coronavirus stay safe rap on TikTok. If your TikTokers get on and go to at Scotty McClure. If your Twitterers follow me, follow me on at Twitter. The YouTube channel, subscribe. Tap the bell. Get yourself notifications. Scotty, says Peter Connolly. My wee six-year-old Imogen's watching with me. Can you give her a wave? Imogen, hello! Hiya! Dinky-doo from Scotty McClue to Imogen. See? There you go. What about that? Fantastic. Jacqueline Trotter's watching us. George Clark is, Nikki says, Scotty. You're the best broadcaster in the world. I love you. Nikki, thank you. What a lovely thing to say. Mm. Special shout out for you. Scotty, Skype saying you're not available. Kareem, when have I ever not been available? So there we are. I can't believe that. And what I might do since it's you, Kareem, is uh, log in again. Yes, it says no internet connection. Have you ever heard so much rubbish in your life? Right. Uh, so there we are. That's a lot of nonsense. So what I'll do is I'll just check that we're all connected. Wi-Fi. There we are. And it's doing its stuff. There we are. So that should be all right, Karim. Yes, more settings. Let me check what it says here. Yes, it says Wi-Fi. Good. Saved. Mm-hmm. Hold on, excellent signal strength, good. There we go, and that should be connecting. So as far as I can see, everything's fine at this end, Kareem. There we go, very, very strange, very, very strange. What we could do, of course, is um, just take a moment, put everything off and back on again. Um, I've seen that work, so shall I do that? It means we'll not be through for a minute or two, but I'll do that. I'll just put the whole thing off. Put the whole thing off. The whole thing on. Power off. Do you want to shut down? Yes, we want to shut down. And uh, so it should come in a wee minute. Kareem, bear with me. Um, Tony Ingledo, hello, I hope you're well. Hello, Tony. James Clough is watching. Robert Rovers, Dinky Do. Derek Robertson, Deborah Walker, fantastic. Craig Mitchell, good evening, Scotty. Nice to see you, nice to see you, Craig. Always nice to see you. More sharing, more sharing. Good to share. Get these numbers up. Oh, uh, are we sip of, did I see tea somewhere? Yes. Lovely, lovely cup of tea. Yeah. Ah, now you're talking. Oh, this is lush. Fantastic. Right. And um, we'll let that settle down just for a minute, Kareem, and we'll come back to you. Eleanor McKinnon's joined us. Nikki Harvey's watching. Nikki Harvey winning. Dinky do, Mr. McClure, says James. And uh, Angela Clark. Murray O'Donnell, thank you, do welcome, welcome, welcome. I say more sharing, more sharing. Um, share in, share to a page, uh, share to a group. What about a group? Let's share to a group. We've got a couple of big groups, and that should help. There we are. Yes. <clears throat> what What will be happening here is one or two people go. Oh, Scotty, I have seen him. It gets. Can I see me? All that, you say, oh, do you think so? Well, how come it's all new people that are joining us? There we go. 
You should know me by now. 36 years you've had me around. Um, so there you are. You should know what's going on. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Right, uh, live now. Wonderful, live now. And um, where are we sharing? Sharing in a group. So we'll get that. There it goes. I'll share it with the Scotty McClue fan group. As I say, there's a good um, queen of you on there, Scotty. So that'll come up. And uh, we've got quite a following. If you can also follow the page, that'll be about 6,000 of you. Scotty McClue fan group for fans. Discussion. Surprise, surprise. Right, we're going to share to this, and if you're all doing the same, wonderful Murray O'Donnell's watching. What a top man. Good evening, Scotty. I hope you're keeping safe, says Eleanor McKinnon. I am, Eleanor, doing my best. Dinky duty, says Angela Clark. Michael Yule's watching. Tony Mac. There we are. The coronavirus is really sorting out the good from the bad. In the very worst of times, you'll always see the very best in people. Excellent, Tony. Yes. I bow to your experience. Um, is this the more grown up stream compared to the YouTube one? Yes, this is where I'm trying to get the YouTube one too, Jack. But there's so many young people on YouTube and they're in a kind of YouTube mentality. Like when they see something good, they go, how could we spoil this and annoy this person and upset everything and all that kind of idea? I mean, I had a woman even on Facebook. Just a cup of poison. And, uh, you know, she, she created a false account. And she was going, oh, hi, oh, oh, you're not doing so well now. And all that kind of stuff. Now, where was she coming from? You know, where are these people coming from? How very strange. Right. I mean, if you don't like something, you don't need to watch it. Uh, so, yes, very much more grown up. Thanks, Scotty McClure. Kareem, I think it's time to switch on again. So give me a minute. So this gets all powered up. Sometimes if it's been sitting for a while, they go to sleep. I remember when I first got a new PC and it was a fabulous thing. All the bells and whistles, all singing, all dancing. And um, it just suddenly kept putting itself off. And I hadn't a clue what was going on. So I phoned a helpline and I said, can you help me here? Um, like, oh, I don't know what's causing that. I said, it just shuts down with no warning. And then there was a bright spot in the background that says, oh, I think he's hibernation zone. He says, oh, my friend says your hibernation might be on. And sure enough, there was a thing called hibernation. And it, the computer was just going to sleep until you set this up. The wonderful Lisa Terrace, dinky do. I now have shared to a few of my groups for you, Scotty, Nikki. I am very, very grateful to you, Nikki Graham. The wonderful Nikki Graham has shared to her groups. So they are. So that should let people know that we are on big style. Randall Taylor's watching. Thank you, Randall. The Corona Info, for those who are very vulnerable, uh, is confusing. People need help, but don't know where to get it. It's disgusting, says Angela Clark. Well, what we are doing, Angela... We're building up a kind of knowledge. And I pop up for the last three days. I've popped up in the morning at 10 o'clock live on Facebook here just for a bit of chit chat. Uh, yes, there's a much better stream here, says Brian Hall. Well, that's just because we don't have the dafties, Brian. The wee souls that go, let's, let's say a naughty word or let's do something silly, you know. YouTube's filled with a bunch of clowns, says Jack. Yes, Jack, you'll see a big difference on here. Scotty, just thinking I went out for a walk at 11 p.m. last night. Got to the main road at the top of my state. Cars flying about everywhere. Shops all closed. Surely they were not all delivering takeaways. Probably not at that speed, I have to say, Peter. Yes, quite right. Right, let's get the Skype fired up so we can talk to... Our trusted people. I'm putting people on a trusted list. And the wonderful Kareem is here, a very, very intelligent man. Uh, so there we are. What else have we got here? Very good English accent there, Scotty. Have you, Ken? Well done. Come on and let us hear it. John Taylor. Hello, Scotty, from the Channel Islands. 
Hello, John Taylor, and love and blessings to the Channel Islands. Now, you're either on Guernsey, Jersey, Alderney, or Sark. Am I correct? There we are. Wonderful. Guernsey, Jersey, Alderney, or Sark. Jack says, got to go, Scotty. Take care. Dinky do, Jack. Lovely to have you with us. Welcome, welcome. Have a great evening and ta -ra -la. So there we go now. Welcome to the Skype. We're just signing in. Kareem, don't worry. It's all happening. Carl, Carlos Stoddley is watching. Dinky do. I hope he's okay. Good stuff. Now, you all come on and I shall uh, do my stuff here. Scotty dot McClure. Yes, that's my Skype for you. Scotty dot McClure. There we are. Excellent. And uh, that should go in okay. And I'll just get us on here. No. Fingers crossed. Will this work? Technology is wonderful, isn't it, when it's actually working? Uh, you're correct, Scotty. Yes. Herm, too. Indeed. Ian McDougall's watching. Thank you, do, Ian. How are you? Lovely to have you with us. There we are. Right, Kareem. It's telling me that I've missed you. So you can phone any time. Can you tell Nicola Thompson to make my dinner now? I'm hungry. Thanks, Scotty, says Andy. Yes. Come on, Andy. You should be in there doing the sprouts and the rice and the chicken and all that sort of stuff. Wonderful. I've got a steamer, and uh, it's very, very good for the vegetables. Here he is. Wonderful. Hello, Kareem. Ah, Scotty, how are you doing? We're, we're fabulous. Sorry about all that pantomime there. So, no, that's all. Technology's great when it does work. Oh, uh, when it works, it's <laughs> wonderful, but always, without fail, when you're doing a live show, and, and we don't have this with the solid state, the old-fashioned equipment, but it's kind of yeah. gone now, you know. But it was so refined <laughs> that everything worked. You put up a feeder, it worked. The big microphone's beautiful. Speakers, yes. tremendous. And now we've got everything so tiny, and you have to turn yeah. it off and on a lot of the time, you know. Just to get it working, I know, I know. Um, I've got a wee question, Scott, you know, I used to have when you were on the, the radio. Yes. And we've seen, um, we had a double dip recession. Yes. Do you think a double dip? No, I'm, 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 I'm losing you, Kareem. Try and stick with me. Are you talking into your mic? Yeah, I'm on the phone, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, that's better. Yeah, so double dip recession. We had a double dip recession. Do you think there could be a double dip uh, corona outbreak? It wouldn't. So anything I think is possible because what seems to be the case for mm -hmm. the conspirators, right? Mm -hmm. uh, governments know exactly what they're doing and this has got out and blah, blah, blah. If you're a right. non-conspirator, then something may have got out of a lab, but that's what's happened. Something is, has escaped. Now, uh, the only thing is every country's got it. Yes? Mm -hmm. So that's the mm -hmm. interesting one. That's the telling one that every country has got it. Now, there's two pieces of information. One, you can have mild symptoms and you could have it and not know you've got it and all this. The other thing is they're, they're preparing huge, huge uh -huh. buildings as hospitals and mortuaries. Yes. So uh, this yeah. is all, this is all very, very, very worrying indeed. So if you think, what is there to be gained by a virus if it mm -hmm. was man made? And the answer is, Actually, nothing in that it's going to cause terrific economic strife across the world. Mm -hmm. yes. So from that point of view, so your double dip recession, um, the bankers made a mess mm -hmm. of it and we mm -hmm. paid the price. That your austerity is not that people were going to starve. It's the fact that as a direct result 
of political policy, people ended up mm -hmm. starving on food banks and what have you. So we know that that was political. This, I can see absolutely no politics in it whatsoever. You know, it's yeah. very strange. Apart from the fact we don't want the economic annihilation and the political fragmentation of the UK, which I suspect would have come from Brexit, we don't want that mm -hmm. attributed to the coronavirus. So yeah. that's, that's that. So there we are. So um, double dip. Let's assume non-conspiratorial because mm -hmm. always difficult to prove that. So let's assume non-conspiratorial and let's assume mm -hmm. that they actually don't know what they are dealing with. So right. Nobody yeah. does. You know, nobody's going, I can tell you exactly what this coronavirus is. Blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. We're not hearing that. What we're hearing mm -hmm. is it just depends on the incubation period. We're, we're looking to see what it is so we can get a vaccine, all that. So everyone's saying we're doing what we can, but nobody has said, I can tell you exactly what this is. So that implies that worldwide, nobody knows exactly what they're dealing with. So to answer your question, could there be a double dip? There could. We could get over it. People say it's pretty safe to go out now. There's hardly any cases at all. And it could just be waiting, hiding round the corner, ready to pounce. You know, because with tuberculosis, <clears throat> and it was a distant relative of mine that actually cured tuberculosis. And um, he, he said, I remember him on the telly saying we cured 16 million people. Nobody believed us, but we did. And that was, um, you know, bringing in the um, streptomycin. Now, what they found was they were people were getting so much better and they would say, the tuberculosis has gone. Fantastic. It's gone. Then it came back. And what that was, was they got the right uh, drug to counter it, but they hadn't realized that even when there were no symptoms, when people were asymptomatic, keep giving them the medicine. Keep up the streptomycin until it's clobbered the lot. You with me? Yes, does that make sense? You there, Kareem? You know, I know Kareem, we seem to have lost Kareem. No, no, it cannot be. There we are. Kareem, come back to us. Excellent stuff. So that's what I think. Uh, an answer to double dip, we don't know yet. That's what I would say. We don't know yet. Now, all you wonderful people. Aha. Ah, Kareem. Hi, Scotty. Sorry, no. something's Wi-Fi going. We lost, we lost you there. <laughs> anyway, not to worry. Um, did that answer your question? Did you hear a bit of that? I, I heard it all, and I'll, I'll watch the replay later on when you put it on to oh. Facebook later to me. Because oh. that's, that's what yeah. I'm thinking, Kareem. I think we don't know exactly what we're dealing with yet. Yeah, yeah that's fine. You know, so, um, so that's the answer to that one. Now, what else do you have? up your magician's sleeve. Just to say, there's a lot of pictures going about on Facebook with people out and about today. And if, if you see pictures from Strathclyde Country Park, you wouldn't think people were in a, a pandemic at the moment. Yes. Like, you know, it was, it was horrible seeing that. And That's not good. It. That's not good. I think the weather brings people out and they can't get their head round it. Yeah, you know, yeah. And I see the odd dafty posting on Facebook going, I'm not going to bother. Now, that's a very yeah. dangerous person. Yes. You know, yeah. nobody likes the lockdown, but we've got to play. Do you know what I mean? We've got to follow yeah. the instructions. Um, yeah. Because otherwise, <laughs> so how do we live with ourselves if somebody says, do you realize that by going out, you may have killed X number of people? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what worries me what, to my first question was that they've got the bodies that uh, can infect other people and it just it's not going to be 
You nope. know, it's always going to be until a vaccine has been developed. It's going to be until there's a vaccine been developed or until it becomes so weak and, um, mm. uh, you know, unstable that it just fizzles, you know? Yeah. Because we have had pandemics before. And I'll need to mm. check out the one about the bubonic plague in Glasgow, plague in Glasgow, and they traced it down to uh, weeks. Catholic funerals. Yeah. So people were dying yeah. of the plague. They didn't realize it was the plague. People were then going to the wake and catching it. Uh, you know, you're going into a single end to a room with an open coffin. Boom. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was that. So it's very, it's very, very interesting, all these things. But we've had, it's been yeah. going on. I mean, I walked in a lovely old church that the radio station have just given up um, in yeah. Preston and I would come out, it was a beautiful old church, but in the grounds was a mass grave from 1848 from uh, cholera. A cholera right. outbreak. And that would be the time that Charles Dickens was writing um, Hard Times in Preston. Right. Okay. You know, very interesting. Yes. Well, listen, Scotty, I'm loving the pop-ups and 10 o'clock pop-ups um, during see. the week. It's a good thing. And, and Doreen, just thank you so much for all your support. It means a lot. All the sharing and the, you know, I know it's it's just tapping the screen, but you really, really are there. And thank you. You know, no, don't, don't. appreciate it. Yeah. Lovely talking to you. And we'll see what the I'll... nation are saying. Say that again, sorry? Lovely talking to you. And we'll see what the nation are saying to it. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Kareem, top man. There we are. That's uh, the wonderful Kareem there. Absolute delight of a gent. Excuse me a second. Oh, hey. Oh, the heat. The heat. The heat. So there we are. Now, uh, let me see what everybody else was saying there. Let me pop back a little bit. Um, Peter Connolly, I'm trying to do my bit. Chinese takeaway last night. I had a meet up at the top of the road. He arrived and shouted at me, isolate, isolate. I was a bit baffled. So there we are. Um, and hang on. I think I know what's going on here. He arrived and shouted at me. I was a bit baffled and said, you're not late. I only phoned 20 minutes ago. Isolate, isolate. <laughs> Johnny Garvey. Ah. Oh. Hello, hello, Mr. Sir. Yes, can you hear me, mate? I can hear you. How are you? Yeah, I feel a bit sick today, Scotty, but apart from that, mate, I'm not too bad. How is yourself? Excellent. No, very good tonight. Very, very busy tonight. So, I forgot it was Sunday. I put the trouble and said, why have, you come, why have you come on early? But it's Sunday show, isn't it? Sunday show, Sunday show. And I decided I usually go YouTube for the first hour and then from nine o'clock we go uh, here. But today I just right. told everybody on Facebook and on Twitter and said to them, you know, is everybody all right for eight o'clock tonight? Because I think it's actually all a right. better time. Yeah, <laughs> you know. I really share out something, catch him a bit earlier. Yeah, well, right, so. what about your good self? Well, I'm just I'm following this coronavirus and it's still baffling me. Um, Scott, whilst we're on the conspiracy theorists, right, someone put it out there to me today, so I wanted to ask you what you thought. Mm. What, they, they're saying this has been used as a biological weapon warfare. What do you think about that, Scott? Well, what would be the point? I mean, if you look back, um, mm. it wasn't this particular virus, but there's a YouTube of Bill Gates, I think it's about five years ago, saying the next war will not look like this, and you've got a huge big nuclear mushroom cloud. It'll look like this, and you can see a virus. Yeah. You know, yeah, I've, seen, I've, 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 I've seen it. You've seen that one, and he talks about it, and he's absolutely spot on. I have an immense amount of time for Bill Gates. Do you know what I mean? And um, yeah. absolutely spot on. And um, and I know somebody that's had lunch with him and they said he was just delightful, you know, uh, from that point of view. He's a very intelligent guy. Yeah. Um, well, like I say, 
the cookies on the ground, this is a fact these labs all start. It's only a matter of time before one got out, you know. Well, if they're doing experimenting like this, then yes, it can get out. I can remember um, hearing a story about a guy that worked in a lab and his mm. glove ruptured and uh, he caught a disease and, and died, you know. Mm. Uh, Even with all the precautions, uh, you, you know, it just takes something and then it, it can spread the spread. But what did you say? I want to say something else. Or what was it? Yeah, I'm not too sure about this two weeks quarantine thing has got it. Because tuberculosis was like a three month quarantine, I'm sure it was. Uh, for 12 weeks? Well, my mother had it. Um, she was in, in the hospital and the kids are in for three months, Scotty, on medications and things like that. Well, I think, I think as I was saying to Kareem, you know, mm. if, if you don't go down the conspiracy route, I think that nobody knows exactly what they are dealing with. They know they're dealing with a virus. They know how certain viri behave, but they don't yeah. know exactly what they are dealing with with this. You know, I agree. I agree with that. And, um, and therefore, they're going to yeah. over. Going to over. Yeah. How, how yeah. many? Say so some people my old, some people are yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Don't you think, Scott? I know, mate. Don't you think they've gone a bit quiet? I know Boris Johnson's poorly in that. Well, yeah. Don't you think they're both very quiet now, Scotty? Well, I think um, everything is kind of shutting down, and what more do you say? You can have your yeah. updates, but what more do you say? Um, all is that we will try and find the money and see that everybody manages to survive economically. Um, yeah. you know, and I think that's a big thing. For that's what any government should be doing. I mean, there was um, there was a, a right wing guy on um, saying it's not the responsibility of government to feed children, and I thought it's the responsibility of government to feed everyone. Everyone, exactly. Oh. Scott, he was going to say that. That's why we have government because they should keep yeah. us safe. They should provide. Uh, you know, clean water and water to us and from us, all that sort mm -hmm. of thing. You know, so it's very, very important. That's the the job of government, either the permanent exactly. government or the politicians. You know. Yeah, well, there's a little story. I know there was a group in Manchester, and it was set up about a year ago, and they were feeding the homeless of Wolverton. Now. All that can't go ahead because of this uh, social distancing. So I don't worry about the homeless people at this time of year, Scotty. Yeah, absolutely, yes, very much so. But what's tending to happen, mm. they've asked the councils to ensure that they find a, a home for every homeless yeah. person. They want them off the streets because if yeah. you're down and depressed and homeless and without, you're not going to be able to not only provide for yourself, but you're not going to think about self-isolation and stuff like that because mm. you get to a stage where you feel your life does not have much value. And that's, uh, yeah, you know, as, as, as a byproduct of that kind of depression. You get, yeah, so, you, yeah, you get yeah. to rock so you, bottom. You people have come out, Scott, you know, some people closing the hotels, sending them into hospitals and things like that, or places where they can stay, like a refuge. That's been great on their part. Mm. But before the go, I wanted to say to you, no, it's not no. I think it, it does two things, yeah. It stops us from spreading the practice. But don't you think that we need more circulation in the rooms? And I wonder, and I wonder if we're staying in the house, maybe we'll cook up the virus and make it worse. Well, there's a guy so, doing exercises. You can do home exercises, you know. So, yeah. No, I don't think so. I don't think um, you, 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 you can make it worse. I know what you're saying. You're saying mm -hmm. the lungs mm -hmm. require... Uh, you know, circulation of air and what have you. But yeah. you can open your windows, can't you? That's true, that's true, yeah. You know, an interesting one. It's just to get this distance because it's the mm -hmm. the virus itself um, has a weakness in that it can't just transfer if the distance is sufficient. Yeah, so that's why that's why I'm so strict on the two-meter distance. I've heard of old Scotty, I said that before, but do you think this is the 20th uh, century tuberculosis then, Scotty? Is this what you, is it, do, do you I, think it's going to be that bad? Do I think what? If this is like the 20th century um, tuberculosis. What was the second word? I didn't hear the last word you used. 
So basically, you think this is the 20th century? No, 20th century, should I say, TB. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes, well, it, mm-hmm. could, it could have that effect if we are not careful. But remember, in the yeah. 1980s, you had HIV. Yeah, you that know, was big. And, and big the, that, that was a big once See, you start looking back, like, there are all these huge health challenges, you know? Mm-hmm. And it, remember, everybody That's had right. to be tested and everybody had to be careful and you had to watch who you slept with and you could you could yeah, get yeah. it from a cut and all that sort of stuff, you know? My dear man, I'm going to have to go. Lovely to you. It's got, there's a bit of feedback there, mate. So there's stuff. a bit of lag. Speak to you soon, Scott. Oh, dinky-doo. There we are, top man. Right. Uh, good evening, Scotty. Good to hear you, my friend. How are things doing? Says Johnny Garvey. Uh, was your dog minder okay? Um, she hurt her back leg the other day. So I'm having to take short walks. Right, Johnny. Well, love to you and the dog. El Salvador. Hi, Scotty and anyone. Kevin Stewart, Dinky Doo, Jim Wilson. It's been passed on to other countries with people traveling around the world. Eleanor McKinnon, you are correct. They should have stopped the traveling. It's man-made to make China and Russia be the power countries, says Jason Dickerson. So there we go. Now, well, of course, there's other stuff. People are saying that another power want to make it look like it's come from China. Has Russia got it, says Lisa Tarras. Yes, I believe Russia has got it, but they're having a job getting the Russians to isolate. Dinky-doo, Scotty, that's me, Clo, home, says Alistair King. Good evening, Scotty, better late than never. So the Chinese Cold War, Scotty, says Craig. Brian Hall, war is peace, George Orwell. So there we are. I am sitting right now, five, ten minutes from where George Orwell was. I think it's a chemical attack to kill people, says Craig Walker. Craig, why would you want to kill people? And why would every country have it? Robert Abercrombie is watching. Carl Morris is watching. Dinky do. Dinky do, Scotty McClure. Hope you're well, sir. Says Carl. Absolutely, Carl. Lovely to have you with us. Scott Cowan's watching. Dinky do. Can we get some more very important sharing? So I'm going to share to another page here, guys. If you can all do the same. Massive, massive share. Share, share, share. Scotty McClure. Now, the last three days I've been popping up here on Facebook Live. And I've been doing it at 10 o'clock in the morning. Is that of interest to any of you? Do say. Also, can you genuinely tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10? Spread it around. The other day, with almost 6,000 people joined us, sometimes it's just um, a few hundred. So obviously that goes up as it goes round on the accumulator. Um, Robert Muldoon, dinky do. Did you watch Junior's live yesterday, Scotty, erupting his volcano, Alistair King? It was fascinating. And the wee soul was thinking, can you stop it? I don't want to lose the volcano. Yes, but it was very, very clever. So there we are. Um, I don't know what you were using to get it to foam like that. We all need to stay in this lockdown until it's safe enough, says Jason. People who are going out are literally breaking the laws. In certain countries, you would be at least arrested. So there we are. Love your broadcast, Scotty McLeod. God bless you, sir. Stay safe and well. God bless, says the wonderful Billy Ness. Billy, thank you very much. You're a top man. And I love your your loch. Your loch is wonderful as well. Um, so there we go. Don't be selfish. Stay in, saves lives. Calvin Allen is watching. Rob Hill's watching. Panic buyers need to stop. I have done a TikTok to this effect. And also look out for my TikTok. It's 15 seconds. Get on to TikTok. Put in at Scotty McClure. Also follow me on Twitter at Scotty McClure. Scotty had a conversation last week with a retired 90-year-old doctor. Now, interestingly, he said in my day, 
this would have come and gone, and the people who were going to die would die, but the world would carry on as normal. Interesting. So what the doctor's saying, well, if he's 90, let's see, when would he be practicing? Let's say he came out at, for talking sake, 25, and he's 90. So if he's 90, he was born in 1930. Am I correct? 25, he would be practicing in 1955, after the Second World War. So there we are, about ages with a doctor that delivered me. All right, Scotty, dinky do rab. People coming back from abroad need testing. Yes, indeed. But once you've been tested, what do you do with that result? I know it depends on the result, but what are you combining? You're just going to say, yeah, we've got more people with it than we thought. They know that. Anyway, uh, you're one hour ahead, so it's only 7.39, says uh, Jason. Yes, absolutely, Jason, half seven. But I thought we'll just pop up earlier. A big shout out to the retail staff. Dinky do retail staff. Thank you for everything. I went to the shop yesterday. We had to queue up outside until there was the requisite number. People had come out and then were allowed to go in very quickly, nip round, and then distance ourselves at the till, uh, pay with a magic card and disappear. People were out in Milgai, walking dogs, running, etc. around the reservoir. The people are sitting, waiting to catch them out. 20 people, the police were sitting, waiting. 20 people find. In better days, I used to, um, when I was in Scotland, walk my dog round Mugdock Castle. Andy McCrory is watching Dinky Doo, Barry Corkendale. Uh, who, as they said, test, 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 Scott Cunningham is watching Dinky Doo, Scott Welcome, welcome. Scott's got an MBE. Andrew Wishmaster Williams and Ken Miles. Wonderful. Look what they have got in. So there we are. BBC News. Hello, Scotty, says Andrew Wishmaster Williams. Dinky do. I was rather chuffed. Um, Porton Down. Frightening indeed, says Ken Miles. Porton Down, of course. The, um, Chemical laboratories. Martial law is the last thing people want, says Brian Hall. No, they might not want it, but if it's doing them good. Five years ago, a guy worked in a lab in Wuhan was arrested for selling animals from the Wuhan lab. He was selling the animals which should have been killed, then burned to the meat markets in the Wuhan area. Yeah, but that's five years ago, Kevin. So, you know, I think it might have appeared before now. Oh, and there's another nation trying to blame it on China. Porton Down didn't release this as believe this has come from China. May I add, not deliberate. So what Billy's saying is this has got out of a lab, but not deliberately. It's come out, obviously, on, I don't know, could come out in clothing or something, couldn't it? Jason says, even in Germany in 1943, they were trying to make chemical warfare. 75 years old, big countries have the chemicals. It was who was first to use it. China didn't take the 5G knock back too well. So there we go. Well, yes, but uh, just because something doesn't suit you politically, you don't go bananas. Thankfully, they have the homeless already off the streets here in Peterborough, Scotty. Ah, Ken Miles, Peterborough, Peterborough Cathedral, where Malcolm Sargent started playing the organ. Wonderful, Peterborough Cathedral, along with, um, who was he with? Uh, I'll tell you, uh, Tom Armstrong, who became Sir Thomas Armstrong, uh, who was the principal of was the Royal College of Music. Wonderful. And him and Malcolm Sargent were choristers and trainee organists at Peterborough Cathedral. Isn't that not fabulous? 
Yes, Bill, I know I was just pointing out, Ken Miles. The government should give funds to reopen all these empty buildings in Blackpool to help the homeless. I know, Brian, but the homeless are very, very vulnerable. It's like when you get the half-witted idiots saying they should put the homeless in Buckingham Palace. It would just send them over the edge psychologically and psychiatrically. There we go. Highly unsuited. Oh, yes, Bill, I knew I was pointing out what we have there. David Jones, thank you, too. Uh, true, Ken, says Billy. Who's not to say the coronavirus won't be a regular thing if this can happen where it spreads around the world? This could happen again any time, says Kevin. Fair point, Kevin, until we know exactly what we're dealing with. Wonderful Mark Finlay's watching, Dinky Doo, Kareem Zakaria. Scott McClure will be on tomorrow at 10 o'clock, God willing. Weather permitting, Kareem, I thought I would try a pop-up, but we need to make sure everybody else knows. There's no point in me popping up just for a few hundred people, but we popped up the other day, and as I say, I think we got about 6,000. So there we are. In fact, I could probably tell you from here how many we got the other day. So there we are. Excellent, excellent. David Diston's watching, Dinky you do. He says, hello, David. Craig Walker. To many people in this world, and they're trying to make the pop, there's two, you, so you should put another O at two there, Craig. T double O for two. Too many people in this world, and they're trying to make the population smaller. Now, why is there too many people in the world? Because if you think about it, immigration is the lifeblood of a nation. This is where I take uh, umbrage and Cambridge at uh, the Leave campaign, saying we must stop people coming into the UK. Scotland needs to repopulate and it depopulated by social injustice. It needs to repopulate by social justice. Wonderful. Russia does have it, but they're not letting us know the scale of the outbreak, says Billy. You're a very, very wise man, Billy. Hello, Scotty boy, says Morris McArdle. Hello, Morris, think you do. I'm just going to do another share here, guys. Let everybody know we're on, because a lot of people won't. And as I say, if you can all keep doing the same, there we are. Sounds like what they did with Chernobyl. Says Brian. Well, Chernobyl, I suspect a lot of it landed in the west of Scotland. And uh, it may have brought sort of all kinds of problems. But I have pictures of my father at Hiroshima, Hiroshima, just after the bomb. And there was no protective clothing. And senior army officers and the Cameron Highlanders and that all walking about. Um, and, and all the trees completely stripped, just rubble everywhere. And there must have been massive radiation at that time. I mean, my father lived in fairly good health till he was 70, nearly 74. Um, you know, and he had a very, very busy war, uh, on all these, uh, major, major theatres of war dropped into Norway. He was one of the, the, um, paratroopers. Uh, wearing the white snowsuits and all that kind of stuff um, that you would see in films like, in fact, I remember watching, um, watching the one with Kirk Douglas in it, Heroes of Telemark. I remember sitting watching it with my father on a Sunday, and he never spoke of his war service. There was a terrific humility about him, but he had a very impressive war record. And um, he was also in at the bridge at Nijmegen, and then he was in India doing guard duty at the end, the Cameron Highlanders. And then he was off to Japan. So there we are. And recording bagpipe playing in Tokyo. Yes, please. 10 a.m. would be great for an actor. Something to look forward to, says the lovely Angela Clark. You'd be very welcome, Angela. Ken Miles. I'm originally from Glasgow, Scotty. Castle Milk, my spiritual home. I know it very, very well, Ken. A wonderful views in Castle Milk. Outstanding. Chateau Olay. Uh, pleased to say I still have a wee bit of an accent. Good Ken. Excellent. We love that. And we love Castle Milk. We send love to Castle Milk. 
Scotty, one thing missed out, says El Salvador. Billy says, maybe, but hopefully not. He's answering, there we are. Stuart Earl McClure, hello from Greenville, South Carolina, USA. Stuart, it is lovely to have you with us, and welcome, welcome, welcome from South Carolina. I've always thought Scotty McClure would do very well in the Carolinas. So there you are. Citric acid and bicarbonate of soda and dish soap, Scotty, with a wee bit red dye and water. You are an absolute top man, Alistair King. Really wonderful. So there we are. You're obviously a very um, wise man when it comes to things. My father's very good with chemicals as well. So there we are. In fact, I think he once did a wee experiment in his digs and blew his eyebrows off. El Salvador, if it's virus, then why does India have it? Where there's still summer, I believe. They're saying the heat may not kill it. Well, I think India is probably a breeding ground for a number of um, uh, problems that you've got there just because of the sanitation. Uh, you know, Gandhi used to say he would love sanitation for India. Uh, Lol, love you, Scotty, says Billy Ness. No, you're a top man, Billy. I've thoroughly enjoyed your chat. Welcome to this great show, says Billy. Gordon Hadley, great idea. Did this in science lessons back in the day, says Billy. Wonderful. Uh, Alistair's youngest had built volcanoes, and um, they got the volcano to erupt. Wonderful. Does anyone remember cremola foam? I love that. You used to stir it in and drink it down. You got raspberry and what else did you get? Lemon flavor. Yes, I was saying if that's uh, biosecurity, it could have accidentally come out of the Wuhan lab. Of course, of course it could, Kevin. No doubt about that. Uh, I've seen a few police in Penny Cook, but they weren't stopping folks. Just watching, says Billy. I'll just be keeping an eye. Penny Cook, I can remember Penny Cook. It was um, a crossword about Scottish place names. And the clue was a cheap domestic. There we are. A cheap domestic. And uh, it was Penny Cook. <laughs> so there you go. And another clue was, um, what was it? Uh, church crashes down or something like that. Yes. Uh, uh Church, church crashing down, and it was Fall Kirk. That was it, stuff like that. Uh, Lombardy in Italy, Scotty, 10.8 million. That's overpopulated. Other people saying maybe a cull. Uh, who had China as 11 million people, so maybe mass overpopulation could have caused the outbreak. Well, I think... If you get overcrowding of any living creature, you get disease. Anybody who runs farms for battery hens, for rabbits, for wool, for um, uh, pheasants, for breeding, um, any of these big things, uh, quail uh, for the eggs, all that sort of thing, any farmer of any of these birds, any poultry farmer, will tell you that there's always a high risk of disease running through the birds if they don't keep everything well controlled. So there you go. So, uh, you know, very, very interesting, you know. And, of course, in this country, our poultry farming is pretty excellent compared with the United States, which is where the panic comes in about the chlorinated chicken. Uh, Scotty, you're going to have to come on every day during this terrible time as we need your entertainment, wit and intelligence and your education and information. It might not always be possible for you. Uh, it might not always be possible for you to do so. However, give it your best shot, my friend. You brighten up people's day, especially during this time. Cheers, pal. Johnny Garvey. It's not me, it's down to people like you and all the other wonderful people who are putting their tuppence worth in. I am merely the catalyst. So there we go. I feel sorry for the homeless folks. Well, we always do, Billy. 
But a very interesting thing is, and this was some politician that made this years ago, he said, the poor will always be with us. So it's um, relative. Poverty is relative and usually is a byproduct of a wealthy society. So when there's a lot of money floating about, you'll find that your poverty actually goes up. Whereas when people have nothing, the poverty is spread throughout and there's a lot of sharing, hence your parables like the feeding of the 5,000. Now, even if you don't have any biblical beliefs, and I know a lot of people don't. A guy said to me recently, I'm an atheist for God's sake. Very strange. So anyway, um, you know, even if you don't have uh, have biblical beliefs, the parables, the commandments, they're all an excellent code for living. And I've seen it happen. I can remember being in a workplace and somebody said, Scotty, just to let you know, on a Friday, we all bring something in and we have a great big lunch. So I said, right, what do I bring in? I said, I'll bring in uh, some quiche and some picnic eggs and that sort of stuff. I went, good, what about you, Mary? Oh, I'll get potato salad. And anyway, suffice to say, long story short, there was a veritable feast on the Friday and people were saying, could you not take some of that away with you? Because it'll just go to waste, right? We all brought something and it was indicative of uh, the concept of the feeding of the 5,000 from the, uh, you know, I believe, I don't think it was just the two loaves. The battery's going down. I don't believe it was just the two loaves. Sorry, the five loaves and the two fishes. Um, you know, the five loaves and the two fishes, that was the start of it. But I think everyone was saying, well, have you not got any lunch? Huh? We've brought all this. You know, so it started off and it just snowballed. Fantastic. Uh, mind you, how it could snowball out in the Middle East, I don't know. I got put out of my neighbor's house with the police. They said I shouldn't be sitting with the neighbors. Shocking. And they were swearing and telling me to go to my own house. I asked why, and they said, so, wait a minute. I asked why, and they said, so that there's no spread of the virus, but I had a mask on, and the police didn't. I had to tell the police to keep their distance. So there we are. That's an interesting one. How do the police effect an arrest if they've to keep their distance? You know, uh, as you know, Scott, uh, Scotty, Mary Queen of Scots lost her life on the 8th of February, 1587. She was not buried for almost a full five months, finally being laid to rest on the 5th of August, 1587 in Peterborough um, Cathedral. Peterborough Cathedral already had one queen buried there, namely Catherine of Aragon, buried in 1536. How fabulous. Ken, thank you very much for that. We're always interested. Ken Miles in Peterborough there giving us a bit of history of Peterborough Cathedral. We love that. Paul Sefton, I'm a bit late joining tonight, Scotty. We're having a family game night. Excellent, Paul Sefton. No problem at all. You're better late than ever. And we have had an hour's change of the clock. And I did say that I would be doing it at eight tonight. So we're actually quite early. So really just... It's nine o'clock now. It's time I pushed off, but um, we're really just coming up to eight o'clock old time GMT, and now we're into BST, British summertime. Uh, Stuart L. McClure out in Carolina. Fantastic. Tomorrow Foam was wonderful. I miss it, says Billy Ness. I know, Billy. It was great. A week from all of foam in the summer when you were wee. Scotty, your father must have been at Nijmegen with my father. He was in the Queen's own Cameron Highlanders. I know it's not spelt like that. Yes, it is. The Q-O-C-H. And my father, he was a very resourceful man. And I'll tell you a couple of wee quick stories about my father. Um, he uh, was out doing the guard duty in India and they disbanded the paras. 
And he went back to the commanding officer of the Queen's own Cameron Highlanders and said, are you looking for any men? And he said, oh, no, no, no. He said, uh, I've got more men than I know what to do with. I've had to let a lot go. He said, unless you can pipe, I'm needing pipers. My father said, oh, I can pipe. So he was in the band of the Queen's own Cameron Highlanders in 1946. Great big handsome chap standing there. And um, then, in fact, I'll show you him. My father, can you see him? Out in Satpur in India in uh, 1946, I think that says, does it? Satpur, India, 46. So that's it. That's dad. And um, then he was coming back from Japan via Australia on a troop ship. And they were all absolutely squashed in like sardines. And uh, he took a walk down to the engine room area. Big signs up, no admittance. And suddenly this voice shouts out to him again, Oi, what do you think you're doing? You shouldn't be down here. There's this, look, can you not read no admittance? And my father said, oh, sorry about that. I'm just getting a, a wee walk round and a change of scene, you know. And he said, are you a Scotsman? He says, yes. He says, ho, oh, how do you do, Fred Glasgow, the chief engineer? And he said, how's things? He went, oh, dreadful, terrible. I've been sailing without a third engineer for most of the voyage. We're very stretched. He said, I've got a pump there that uh, isn't working, and I haven't even got the time to strip it down. My father said, do you want me to have a look at it? He said, do you know about these things? He said, I'm an engineer. So my father stripped the pump down, then set it going, and... Uh, the chief engineer said, how would you like to sail with us as third? So my father came back from Japan as uh, the third engineer of a troop ship. <laughs> and of course, he got to eat with the crew and get his own cabin and all that. Fantastic. Uh, I got my cream soda and pineapple crush from the Baracord Juice Man. Wonderful. Yes, you know, all these super lemonades. Yes, bad husbandry has caused many diseases, says the wonderful Kevin Stewart. Henry Anderson's watching. Never had the chromophone, did you not? Now, I am going to have to dash off, as we say, in all the best of circles. And um, I'll be back on air here with you at 10 o'clock sharp tomorrow morning. Tell everybody on your Facebook page, please. Because it all depends on you. There's no point in me sitting here if you guys aren't with me. All right, so I'll be back at 10 o'clock in the morning, GWWP, God willing, weather permitting. Until then, have a wonderful, safe, and peaceful evening. Lovely being with you. Mwah, you beautiful people. You Lars that you are. Wonderful Lars. And um, join me tomorrow, 10 o'clock sharp, same page, same old place, different chat. Fantastic. Always different people, different ideas, different chat. And I can see this being very, very big during the quarantine because we need to have something different. The one thing without blowing any trumpets, I can guarantee you, is that you will not get anything like this on television or radio anywhere else because the Scotty McClure shows are unique. There we are. Dinky do to every single one of you. Lots of love. And as I say, we will catch up tomorrow at 10 o'clock sharp. Be there or be square. If you're not there, you will be missed. Never, ever miss a moment of Scotty McClure. If you miss a moment of Scotty McClure, you miss a moment of life. Shall I sing you the goodbye song? Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody. A vitar zain, au revoir, and a cheerio. Ta-ra, my loves. Dinky-doo.